opinion and you haven't gotten heard back from me, I will respond in the next day or two. Um, and probably some of you have contacted uh, as well. You got me. You know stuff. Okay, no one responded to Don because he did it all right the first time. Um, anyway, so homework fun, check your scoring. As I wrote the email, unfortunately, I mean, it's important that everyone sort of, you know, not feel like, oh, I got the tough grader or the easy grader or whatever. And yet, some of us were different. Overall, I just didn't know why. So I added points to the people who were low. Um, and as you said, many of you saw, roughly half of you got extra points. So the extra points are, if you got five extra points, it probably means if you would have scored by somebody else, Average would have been 5.5, of course. I don't really know that. But I think it makes it overall fair, though, in any individual case, hard to know. So it's unfortunate. But. Um, okay, so that's homework one. I think any questions probably people have are sort of related to your individual homework, but you have anyone have general questions on homework one? Or we fire homework three. Okay, let's talk about homework three, because that's. That's due, and let me just review it. So the main news on homework three is that you have software to use. So that's good. Let's review homework three for a minute. So remember that you will design test cases for Sabubi's capability to select and rank substitutes for a particular teacher's absence, okay? So, that, make sure you're, what you're doing focuses on that. So booby ranking substitutes based on a particular teacher's access. Okay? So even with the, even with the very, we, all we've given you is a little really sliver of Sabubi. If there was a complete Sabubi, it would obviously have lots more to it. But even with that little sliver, you could test other things. So let's just lo look at that little sliver. Okay. So also, if you have a wider screen, it will look better because it's sort of it's sort of wide. Um, anyone have any trouble running Sabubi yet? Their web page, their web browsers didn't accept it. Okay, it's using some kind of advanced features, but probably most of you have web browsers that are in the last three or four years, so it should work. Um, but you might check that out if you're not sure, and not wait till like the last five minutes. Okay. So um, suppose, so for instance, one thing I can do is I can add another substitute teacher. So I can add Dan Frost, and I can type in an invalid social security number, maybe. I can type it in at least, right? may or may not accept it. If I said, OK, my test, I'm going to test whether I'm, use, I'm putting in a valid social security number, would that be in the spirit of the homework assignment? Absolutely not. Okay, you will really not get many points if your test case is validity of social security number. Is that because we really don't care about social security numbers? No. It's because the assignment said, oops, Sabubi's capability to select and rank substitutes for a particular teacher's absence. So there's many, many other parts of Sabubi, even in this little sliver. But that's not what I'm asking you to test. Okay, so I just want to make sure this is really clear because some people get really fascinated by invalid data being typed in. And invalid data is absolutely something you need to test in general, but every assignment says do this. Just like if you took a math class and they said add two plus three, you might say, well, I'm not really interested in two plus three. I'm going to give you the answer of four plus seven. Well, you probably wouldn't get much credit, right? So, so just be aware. What you're testing is, so so does this system allow you to type in an invalid social security number? Has anyone actually tested that? Good, no one's messing up. <laughs> it probably does. Um, I asked Chris to, in the interest of time, to not do too much, oh, there we go, not to do too much editing on the user input. So just be aware of that, that's not the, Point we're that's not what we're trying to test. Now, if you find, as I said in the email, if you find that there's some flaw in the user interface that prevents you from creating the test case that you're interested in, 
please let me know and I'll fix that. Okay? But if it's just a flaw in the user interface that allows invalid data to be entered, I'm not that interested in it because, I, first of all, I know about that. And that's not what you're trying to test, okay? So I just want to really be really clear because I know I'm going to get a lot of homework threes that say, okay, my basis is validity of, uh, you know, whether the social security number is numeric or something like that. And we're going to feel bad, kind of, for saying, okay, but you're not going to get a lot of points because the first thing was, the, the main thing is what are you trying to test, okay? So let me be clear on that. Has any, the other thing that I just want to make sure you know is that once, you, you know, we have some substitute teachers built in, as I said, if you don't like them, you don't want to test Martin Luther because you're Catholic or something. Just joking. Okay. Uh, we're sort of a thorn in the side of Catholics. Uh, and, if, you know, any of these people, boy, someone chose sort of politicized substitute teachers here, <laughs> except for Dan Frost. So you can always add Dan Frost. I have no political leanings whatsoever. Um, hired teachers, okay, Marie Curie, I think we all like her, and, I, and I'm not sure I know who these other people are. Anyway, um, so then we can, so it, it turns out, for instance, that um, the first two substitutes are missing a class. We don't even have really any sense of date in the system, it's just for the next day, okay? So it's just yes or no. So Marie Curie and Carolyn Herschel, is she the one of the greatest astronomers who discovered Saturn or something like that? Neptune? Here it is. Is that who Carolyn Herschel is? Yeah. Okay. German astronomer. Sorry, what? She was a German astronomer. German astronomer. English. German British astronomer. German British, okay. She was born in Germany, moved to Britain, did her discoveries in Britain, right? Uh, Keep reading Wikipedia and report back. <laughs> okay. I don't think I ever have said that before in class. Okay. So we can generate report, and we get our results, and we can see that for Marie Curie, the teacher to substitute, there was nobody good. So that's interesting. That might be test worthy in some way. And for... Carolyn Herschel, there were two substitutes. Eleanor Roosevelt, who's good because she already substituted for Carolyn Herschel, and Harvey Milk, whose points are 138. So that's the sort of thing you're testing. Is, is this correct that Eleanor Roosevelt gets ranked first because she already substituted for Carolyn Herschel, and Harvey Milk gets ranked second because and he has 138 points? That's the sort of thing I want you to focus on, okay? That's where I'm not sure that the algorithm is correctly implemented. Okay? Yeah. So just to kind of go over the, the idea behind equivalence partitioning, you want us to take a particular set of valid inputs. Okay, so, so let's go back to the idea behind, because that's where I was going to next. Okay. Um, So I just, want to, I just want to have the lecture slides up in front of us. 